having a ton of fun with the bullet. I was doing everything I bought the car for. Daily driving, doing burnouts, drifting, having fun. This is a picture of me and my friend's blue Mach 1. That's not my Mach 1 in the picture. Just having fun out, hanging out with friends, going to the races that they had here in town. I found out that the Bullet Mustangs all had a fourth Bullet hologram sticker and these stickers were produced after the cars were made and they were supposed to replace the one on the strut tower because the original one would wear off with the heat from the engine bay and cleaners from people cleaning the engine or moisture, water, anything like that. So Ford had to issue another hologram sticker and this sticker was different than the others. It did not have a zero in front of the number um, that would signify that this was the reproduction one and only one was made for each car came in a special envelope It was supposed to go to the Ford dealership and only the Ford dealer was supposed to put it on the car They weren't allowed to give you the sticker I was able to get away with getting the sticker and a lot of people have as well in this case They just handed me the envelope because I ordered it when I showed them my VIN number and they got it sent to the dealer um, my black bullet they gave me a hard time and I had to go back and get it from somebody else and a lot of people do take those stickers and they'll put them in shadow boxes or frame them or something they don't really want to put them on the car over the existing sticker so that's just something kind of cool about the bullets and I made a whole video about those um, that's on the channel but it was cool to see this official Ford documentation and their drawings and everything so I thought that was cool so I got that for the car and then I started working on the car it needed a few more things I really wanted to clean the coolant out the coolant was all brown the overflow tank was really dirty and when I drained it out I was able to dig all this crap out with a screwdriver and I just wanted the car to have a nice cooling system I wanted it to be clean and free-flowing I was taking it to the racetrack a lot I was driving to Vegas two hours there and back and racing and I wanted it to have the cooling that the car deserved the car never overheated at all it never ran hot but I just felt like if I'm racing this engine, I want it to have nice, fresh coolant inside. So I ended up removing the entire expansion tank and I cleaned it all up. I shook it left to right with hot water and rinsed it until it came out clean. Then I filled the radiator and all the coolant hoses up with water. Ran the car for a couple minutes, shut it off, drained it all out. It came out muddy brown color. Filled it all up with fresh water again, ran it again and then shut it off after a minute, drained it all out. I did that seven times and then the water finally started coming out nice and clear. So I knew I got all that gunk out of the coolant passages in the block. I continued detailing the car, trying to buff it all out. The problem with the True Blue, like I mentioned in the other video, I found this better picture to represent. These are the crow's feet. This is clear coat failure. So the whole roof of the car and the hood and the top of the trunk look like this. It just like, look like little tiny X scratches and I remember some kid at work came up he's like what somebody have a knife fired on top of your car and I was like <laughs> yeah go fly a kite then the next item on the list was new brakes the powder coated factory with laser etched running pony Brimbo PBR brakes were just fine the calipers always worked fine but it was time to put in some new rotors and pads and I even did a new master cylinder as well and they looked good on there. Brand new brakes are always a nice thing. So the car just started looking really good. I always kept it in the garage when I could. I mean, I did have to keep it outside a lot. Next thing I did was change some idler pulleys. They were starting to squeak. And I had mentioned earlier that the bullets come with the same GT wiring harness. So they have fog light harness pigtails underneath the bumper, even though the bullets did not come with fog lights. And so I got an original OEM set of fog light housings and even an original OEM fog light switch and I wired them all up just plugged them all in basically and it was very clean they all just went in just like a normal car would have and my brother ended up getting a new Mach 1 chin spoiler for his car because his was a little bit tweaked he didn't like it very much the way it was and so I gladly took his old one he was kind enough to give me his old chin spoiler so I added that to the bullet and it looked great so I was just really enjoying the car at this point having fun owning the Mach 1 and the bullet I daily drove the bullet this is me just driving home from work and visiting places and 
This is a, one of our favorite places we go to hang out. You can see the car looked great there. It was really coming together. And my friends had some GTs. We had a lot of friends with muscle cars at this point. And these were the main GTs that we'd hang out with. You can see my friend's charger in the background. And in this picture, you'll see the silver GT is a 2000 Kenny Bell supercharged GT at this time. So obviously he was the fastest of the three. And the red fire GT in this picture is a car that you've probably seen a lot on the channel. This is back when it only had about 78,000 miles on it. It was pretty low miles, maybe around 80,000 miles on it. It belonged to a friend of mine and it was an automatic. One of my first stories was actually about this car. Um, it ended up getting totaled and I bought it back. I was about to part it out but then I decided to save it and then my parents bought it from me really cheap for my little sister and she's been driving it for the last several years and so I have channel updates on this car on my on my channel and so anyway the owner of that car wanted to go out and race the bullet and I don't know if he figured that since it had a lot less miles that he'd be faster or whatever but anyway this was the race the camera was in the bullet for this race if you can't tell okay As you can see the bullet was doing really well really quick for a car with just an exhaust on it and we would hang out with friends go on cruises the car club that my brother and I started was doing really well we were getting up around a hundred members and so this is just the bullet out on a nice back road cruise with some friends so the next thing for the bullet that I wanted to do was start making it faster and the bullet engine if you look at this awesome diagram I just want to mostly share this because I had it this is a diagram of the bullet engine and the only real difference between this engine and any GT engine is the intake manifold now the bullet has a aluminum intake manifold with higher runners on it it gets torqued a little faster so it is a better intake manifold plus it's not prone to cracking like the plastic ones that the GTs have but anyway um, what I'm getting at here is the GT engine and the bullet engine are almost the same. In the past I've made videos that argue that the two valve GT engine is actually a decent little engine for what it is. I mean for the horsepower it makes per cubic inch it's the same as an LS1 engine. Um, but this is the bullet intake manifold. I polished the ribs on top. I wet sanded them and made them look good. But anyway uh, as far as adding power to the car went I decided that it was time to do some fun stuff and my sister was in Phoenix visiting some family and I jumped on Craigslist Phoenix I was looking around and I saw a guy who was selling a set of Bassani mid-length headers that were the ceramic coated ones and the matching Bassani off-road X-pipe because the uh, inlets on the X-pipe there have to meet up to the mid-length headers and so he was selling all of this for like 550 bucks and that's still a lot of money, but I, I called my sister and said, hey, do you have your truck by chance? And she said, yeah, we're visiting and we have our truck down here. And so I asked her if she would be kind enough to meet up with the guy and buy those for me and I would give her the money back. And it was just so awesome how that worked out. It was very nice of her to do that for me. And so I ended up getting the Bassani mid-length headers and the Bassani off-road X-pipe for the car. And my brother and I were cruising around in the bullet and they had the Mustang Club of America show come here to town and there were a whole bunch of Mustangs everywhere and we were all driving around and we met a guy at a gas station who came up to us and asked us directions to where the autocross was going to be for the Mustang show. He saw the bullet so he knew we were into Mustangs and we got to talking and he ended up telling us that he was way into uh, building rear ends that he had a diff shop back in Colorado I think somewhere and uh, he spent like 15 years building axles and I had mentioned to him that I would love to do gears in my bullet and he said hey you know what let's make a deal you buy a set of gears for yourself and buy a set for me because he had a fox body that he wanted to do gears on 
And I think he said something about this being a special Celine Fox body. So if you know about that, then you do. But don't quote me on that because I'm not entirely remembering that correct. But basically he said, buy us both a set of gears and I will help and teach you how to install them. And I was like, hey, that's a great idea. So I bought a full kit from American Muscle of 373s, which is the Ford Racing box there with the royal purple on it. And I was visiting family up north with my wife, and we found the other box there that had 410 gears that said they were for an 88 axle for a Ford. So I bought those too to put in the bullet. Unfortunately, we found out when we went to install them that the gears I had bought for the bullet had the wrong bolt pattern and they weren't going to fit. But this is us just taking the cars apart together and pulling everything apart, getting the diff cuffer off, pulling the axles out. Um, and this is him teaching us how to do all the work on the rear end. What was really cool about this was my brother was taking pictures of the whole process. And we were doing this build together and he was showing us how to put the carbon fiber clutches in the differential and the limited slip. and. He was showing us how to build everything, and we documented every step of the way. And this was a lot of work. This is something we had never done before. And it's kind of scary to think about pulling your car apart like this and wondering if you can put it back together. But we had the help of my friend, and we found out that the gears I bought for the Bullet were not going to fit. So I had to buy a brand new set of Ford Racing 373s. And we were hoping that they would get here in time because my friend was going to go back to Colorado. And so... We couldn't put it back together without him, and his car got finished, but mine was still in the garage like this. And so he was even able to go and return the gears I bought that were wrong uh, up north where I had been visiting the family and get my money back for that. So that helped out a little bit, and I just let him keep that money for his uh, gas, for travel and everything, because he was... It was out of the way for where he was going, but it was kind of complicated, and I needed to get the new reluctor rings for the ABS pressed onto the new Alloy USA axle shafts I had bought, so the axles would be strong, and the shop in town was really hard to deal with, and they charged me double just because I needed it done quickly, but I had a time constraint to deal with, so while we were waiting, we pulled all the wheels off the car off the front and started tearing into the suspension, because I thought, well, we're waiting for these gears to come, we might as well do the headers on the car. And that's a pretty big process in itself. You gotta tear the whole suspension apart and you gotta get under there and support the engine and, and pull the springs out and drop the whole K member. And that's the whole cradle that holds the engine. So here's the stock manifolds coming off. And so it was a learning process and we would go on to do this on a lot of our friends' cars later. So it was fun once you learn something, you know how to do it. My neighbor suggested coating the new exhaust gaskets in this copper seal and putting some on the heads. We tried it out. I don't know if that helped a lot. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but we did at the time. And then we installed the headers, and they look so good coming down like that. And I found some Loudmouth 1 SLP exhaust uh, resonators that I had mentioned in the last video that I wanted those on the car again. And so I was able to buy another set of those. If you look at this picture, you'll actually notice that the one on the bottom is skinnier than the one on the top. That is just comparing the Loudmouth 1, which is skinnier, to the Loudmouth 2, which is fatter. And the Loudmouth 2, which is the one on top, is fatter and it has sound deadening material inside and perforations. If you look through, it's still a straight through muffler, just like the Loudmouth 1 is, but it is quieter. So I like the louder better, and I got a set of those two to put on. And here you can see the Bassani X-Pipe next to the stock one with cats, how much different they look, and that they join at different places up towards the top where the manifolds would be or the collectors for the headers would be. And here you can see the ends of the Alloy USA axle shafts and also the Alloy USA lug nut studs. So that all looked good together. That's with the wheel on without the center cap. You can still see it in there. I thought that looked pretty cool. But I put the wheels back on the car got ready to drop it down. I did a short throw shifter. This is the 5.0 Pro shifter with the Steeda handle on it. I like that combination a lot. And uh, put the shifter on the car and I got the wheels back on, everything ready, and I had to go get the car aligned because dropping the K-member, messing with the suspension, everything was all off. So this is the car on the alignment rack. I was confident that the alignment was done right and everything. I had a Bama race tune with the SCT programmer 
for 91 octane so I felt like the car was safe to drive felt like it was we'll get to that later but anyway we went out and did some racing <laughs> So the Bullet was turning into a pretty stout little car. It beat the GT there to the left, it beat the Charger, it beat the white LS1 Trans Am. It wasn't going to beat that silver Trans Am because it was 526 to the wheels LS3 swap. Heads, cam, intake, everything. And so the Bullet wasn't the fastest car in the group, but it was holding its own. So there's still a lot more to come. Stay tuned for part four of the Bullet story. I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank everybody for your awesome comments and your support. You've all been very nice and you say a lot of nice things and I really appreciate it. I love reading your comments.